Welcome to Stories and Songs, an interview series with musicians from the world of jazz and improvisation. I'm Andrea Keller and it's my great pleasure today to be speaking with Fran Swin. Welcome Fran and thanks for joining me. Hi, no worries, thanks for having me. Uh, Fran, what have been the pivotal events in your musical journey? Um, yeah, I think they're mostly um, around people who've taught me. Uh, so finding the right sort of guidance, mentors, teachers. Um, and first, the first one probably being well, being a, a, an older teenager, you know, 16 or something like that, and finally finding a guitar teacher. I've been playing for a long time, but just really struggling with direction and um, being pushed and knowing how to work on things. And, and it was bef long before the internet, so you're just you're completely just doing everything yourself, you know. Um, and he just put me on a really good path, you know, with looking at learning the fingerboard and understanding, you know, the technical things and scales and all of the rest of it. And as soon as I got that little nudge, I just went so much faster. You know, I just kind of ate it all up. I was just ready for it. So that was the first thing. And then probably the next one was going to college, you know, and for all the same reasons, like I'd done a course before that, um, and um, which had been great. Everything had been great, but that was just it's sort of like the right people at the right time, you know? And um, I just found that, um, I was really ready for the kind of input I, I got there, you know, especially particular teachers that I had. Um, I was really ready for it and they, and I just got pushed in, in a great way for me, you know. So I, was really, I feel really lucky about those, those two things. Fantastic. And what obstacles have you had to overcome and how have you dealt with them? Um, well, probably the biggest, most obvious um, thing, obstacle I've had was um, sort of like injury stuff to my left arm all through my 20s. Um, and I guess, I, I don't know how, how I dealt with it. I mean, I dealt with it in every way possible and I, don't, I can't really nominate the way that worked, but I just was flailing and trying everything um, and it took a lot of uh, sort of, what's the word, sort of reflection and imagination to ultimately kind of deal, deal with it but um but I learned a lot from it but I, I think it kind of rocks your confidence a little bit when you um it shakes you a little bit because you when you feel like you sort of can't trust your body it's a it's a bit uh destabilizing and when you're surrounded by other you know young people who can as well it's you know you feel like there's also a sense of shame because you um it's like you've made a mistake, you know, you've done, you're doing something wrong that's causing this damage, what's going on? Um, but, you know, I did, like I said, I learned a lot and um, I feel like it is informed all the ways that I understand the guitar and teaching and, and playing too. Um, so I've actually, ultimately, you know, it's probably been good for me, but that I feel like that probably did slow me down yeah. for a bit, yeah. And do you have any mottos or personal philosophies um, that guide you or is there any particular advice you'd like to share with us? About playing music. Mm. Um, and being a musician. Being a musician, yeah. I mean, I think one thing I notice with, with people that I teach, with young people is, um, you know, and, and with the good ones too, with the keen students, you know, I feel like sometimes they're waiting to be told how to play or what to like or what's good or what do you think or what should I do or all of these things. And I mean, I'm sure I was exactly the same, you know, you, you're sort of looking for an answer. And um, I think it can sometimes hold you up a bit, you know, like um, you, no one's going to tell you, you know, especially not here. I think it's not in our culture here in Australia to to pass that, those things on, it, like it might happen in other places. But um, I, I would just sort of say, you, you know, my advice would be to go and find out what you like, you know, to just discover the things that you like in the music and then try and work out what they are and not to overthink it, you know, not to think about, oh, but I should be doing this, or I should be doing that. Like find the things you like, work out why you like them and, and don't question it so much, you know, I think. That, that would be something I would pass on to young people. Great. 
And could you please nominate a song or an album that's particularly significant or important to you and just tell us a little bit about why you've chosen that? Yeah, sure. Um, it's a, a song that I wrote. Actually, the album's also called, called the song. It's self-titled. Self-titled, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's called Every Dog. And um, it's a song I wrote years ago and uh, I think I would choose it because I, I think for start the recording is a, a good example of the things that that trio, which featured Tamara Murphy and Ben Hendry, I think that that recording of that song and the way we played that song is a good example of things that worked well amongst those three people, worked to the strengths. Um, but I also think just the composition was kind of like, you know, you hear, you hear about when you're studying, you know, people transcribing and stealing other people's things and putting them into their own thing and, and that comes out different. You think, wow, I really want to be able to do that. Um, and then I feel like this is a song that I did do that. And, um, and it didn't take much, you know, like the first chord is off, you know, a Sergio Mendes thing, the voicing, and then it's got other elements from, you know, I was really influenced at that time by the, uh, the Bill Frizzell live trio album with Joey Barron and Kermit Driscoll. And I was also really listening a lot to Julian and Steve and, and Will Guthrie and, you know, those kinds of more open things. And I feel like all of those things came into that song and it came out. And I, when I listen to it, I feel like it sounds like that. That's things I don't like about my playing, of course, but I, I can at least go, oh, well, it sounds like all the things I was into at the time, you know, and I successfully stole some things and put them into my song. And it didn't sound like their song. So I feel like it's one of them. Success, fantastic. We yeah. can't wait to listen to it. Hey, thanks so much, Fran, for your time today and for sharing some of your story with us. Really appreciate it. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks for having me.